Good morning everybody, it's Chad from Six Blog. Uh, today I want to do a video and talk about my black diamond alkaline carbon cork trekking poles. I had to make sure I said that right, it's a big long name. Um, some of you may remember a little while back I did a uh, post hike gear talk video um, and I talked about my uh, black diamond trekking poles. Uh, I had bought these off of steep and cheap for somewhere around 65 bucks. Um, the reason I got them for so low is because they were last year's models. Um, obviously in 2013 they replaced the flip flops with a slightly different design. As far as I know the only change in design was actually um, the looks of the actual lock. Uh, as far as the mechanism itself it still worked the same and as far as everybody says you know uh, it still worked just as well. The only difference is it's actually made out of metal and it's got this nice little hook looking thing. Uh, some folks say that they actually prefer these old styles because I've heard some people say that uh, the new styles was easy to get caught on things. I don't know. Anyway it's not about that. Um, but like I said uh, I picked these up for 65 bucks. Uh, like they're normally $150, $160 trekking poles. So that was the reason I picked it up because it was such a good good deal. And I have heard a lot of great things about these trekking poles. Um, didn't get around to using them until recently on a Thanksgiving hike. I uh, just did like two days. Uh, however, on that hike I found out real quick that I'm not super excited about these poles. Uh, the obvious reason that I'm not super excited is I'm used to using my Gossamer Gear LT4s. And those um, I, I just love them. Uh, they're, they're great poles, uh, specifically for the weight and the comfort. Um, now, I'm not going to get into the durability aspect of it. I will say I have uh, broke one of the lower shafts on my, one of my LT4s. So I've got that replaced. Still going fine. Um, but anyway, uh, the second thing that I really did not like and just really actually turned me off to these is the handles, the grips. Uh, most of the time when I'm hiking, I kind of hold my poles, I palm them, kind of, and I have a real loose grip onto it. Um, a lot of times I've been known for, as I'm hiking, um, I'll either drop it because I have such a loose grip on it, or the uh, tip will get stuck in the mud or whatever, and my hand will come off of it, and I turn around and pick it up or pull it out of the ground. Um, but because of that, um, I found these to be quite uncomfortable for me. Um, the grips are actually cork, and I like that. Uh, however, they are kind of hard. Um, I wish they were just a little bit more spongy feeling. Um, but I, I think I could have lived with it if the grips would have all been cork. What I don't like is this top part here. Uh, and you can see the, the gray and the black. That's actually two different pieces of plastic or rubber that's fitted together. And there's this little line up here where it meets. And that was just rubbing into my palm. And it was just, for me, it was uncomfortable. I didn't like it. Uh, also, uh, I use my trekking poles at a short height, so this extra extended grip down here on the bottom, it's nice, it feels okay, but it's useless for me. I have no, no use, no, no need for this. Uh, so that's just extra weight. Um, so I decided that I wanted to attempt to remove these grips and put some of my favorite grips on them, which are the Gossamer Gear, uh, Gossamer Gear LT4 grips. So a little while back, a couple weeks back, I ended up removing the grips off of one just to see how easy it would come off. It worked out okay. Once I realized getting it off was okay, it took a little effort, uh, but it was okay. I went ahead and ordered some of these grips. And I think these are about 20 bucks on Gossamer Gear plus shipping, somewhere around there. Um, so I ordered a set of these and they just came in yesterday. And I couldn't, couldn't wait out, so I went ahead and I put it on. And this video, I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to try to make it not super, super long, um, but I'm going to try to show you uh, how I go about taking these off and putting this one on. A couple of things I want to point out, though, about um, putting this on. Uh, first off is the weight difference. Um, this pole weighs about 8.1 ounces. Uh, my, it actually fluctuates between 8.1 and 8.2. Uh, for this pole, uh, and this is the stock black diamond pole. The only thing is, is it doesn't have the uh, the strap because I don't use straps, and I'm not getting into why I don't use straps. That's my personal preference, and you're welcome to your own. Um, but anyway, this is just a regular pole. Like I said, 8.1, 8.2. It fluctuates between the two on my scale. Um, this one with this grip 
weighs 6.8. So that's a total of 1.3 to 1.4 ounces shaved off of each pole. Um, so what that equates to is anywhere between 2.6 and 2.8 ounces uh, that I've lost in weight over these. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but I've got to tell you, um, I really love these grips. I mean, they're just, they're a little squishy. Um, they're not actually cork. Uh, they're cork align is what Gossamer Gear calls them. Uh, so it's not truly cork, uh, but it's got a real nice grip. Like I said, I've been using my LT4s and that's what's on those. And I just love it. It's been my favorite grip so far. Uh, whether I'm holding it like normal or whether I'm palming it, which like I said, is probably about 80% of the time. Um, but what I found out is, I mean, this just has a completely different feel to it. Um, the top end is just so light now. I mean, it's it kind of reminds me of LT4, probably because of the grip, but it, it's just, it feels much lighter than this does. Uh, to be honest, this feels like it's heavy on both ends. Whereas now with this one, it feels like it's just heavy on this end. Um, however, there are a couple of things I want to point out that um, has changed about these poles now. This is part of the, this is the top part of this pole. And what it is, is um, you can see, maybe you can see how far down that goes. So what it is, is I'm going to have to cut this off. I'm going to have to cut this off and peel it off. And this came off rather easy. This part was kind of tougher to get off because it, it is actually cork. So it peeled apart like cork. It just kind of broke up in a bunch of pieces and stuff. Um, once I got it all off, um, I came to this. And essentially what it was is, uh, just show you this for reference, uh, this, is, this is actually a section of a Gossamer gear pole. This is one of the ones I broke. Uh, but just don't, don't think about that. Uh, this is how the pole is once the grips are removed. The problem is, is the shaft from the black diamond pole actually extends up into this little plastic uh, housing. And the thing is, is, I know you probably can't see it, but there's a little, uh, it's not a screw, it's an expander of some sort. Um, I can't think of what it is that I would call it. But anyway, the shaft actually slides up in there and there's a sleeve that it fits into. So there's a top there's an inner and an outer sleeve. I, I'm, I don't think I'm making this making good sense of this. Um, but it, it's just a cup and that slides right into it. And then they put this little pin through there. And obviously the pin expands on the inside. So I didn't really have a good way of pulling the entire pole out. So what I ended up doing is where this black housing stops, I just took a saw and I cut the pole off right there. So what that means now, and I can't show you with this one, but I'll show you with this one once I get to that point. Um, what that means now is that this inner pole actually sticks up just a little bit higher than this pole here. So when I put, uh, when I put this, my grips onto the top section of the pole, what that means now is I can't push the pole completely down. That's as far down as I can get the pole because the end of this pole now is hidden up in the top of the cork handle or the cork align handle. Uh, and to show you the difference, um, this middle piece is pushed all the way up into this top piece as far as it can go and you can see the difference. You can see how much room there is between the two um, locks. Now on this one, this middle piece is pushed as far up as I can get it to the top part and you can see the difference in the locks there. So maybe that makes sense to you. Maybe you'll understand a little better once I get to that point. One other thing I want to point out is both of these are pushed up as far as they can go into the pole. And you can see now the original is actually about an inch longer. Okay, Even though this has got a bigger distance between it, the original is about an inch longer. So this pole actually packs down a little bit smaller now. And maybe I'll, I'll measure this and put the, the lengths in. I'll just do it right now. So it looks like the pole with the uh, Gossamer gear grip is 23 and a half inches long when it's completely packed down. And the pole, the original pole, is about 24 and 7 eighths inches long. So 
23 and a half, 24 and 7 eighths. So actually it's just a little over an inch shorter. However, um, the other difference is if you pull these out to the stop and lock each one down to where it says stop. And I'm going by the, I know you can't see it, but where it says stop, the very edge of the lock is on the edge of the S. Okay. So that's the pole with the new grips. And you're probably not going to be able to see all this in the camera because it's probably going to be too long. Okay. But I'll just show you. There, the grips are lined up. And now you can see there's actually a difference in the overall length when they're extended. Uh, there's actually about two inches difference. Uh, and that two inches is lost in the pole that I made. Now some of that is going to have to do with I cut this part out. Um, that's actually where pretty much all that's coming into play. Because if you'll line up these locks on both poles, now the tips are where they're supposed to be. The locks are both lined up. Well, now they are. And now you can see there's, the, there's where I lost my extra. The end of the, uh, the black diamond pole is almost right on the top of that pole. So if I was to put that back in there, you see that's where it's going to be made up. Um, however, I will say about both of these poles, um, there's that much room. Let's see. Let's just measure it. Um, it's 1 and 7 8 inches from the S to the end of the, the trekking pole. So I would feel comfortable with either pole, doesn't matter which grips are on it. I would feel comfortable pulling it out about another inch past the stop and then locking it down there. Now that's not what's going to be suggested by the manufacturer or anything like that. Um, and if you're using it as like, uh, well, in any situations, if you're putting extreme weight on it, uh, whether you're hiking on it, which I don't know anybody would need to hike with a pole uh, extended that far, like 54 inches, um, although I, I may be wrong. Um, or if you're using it inside a mid or something like that and you're having to fully extend it like some of the dual mids or something, um, you may not want to do that um, if it's going to be real windy and you're expecting super bad weather because that may stress it a little bit more than what it's uh, said. I will say that I've seen in the past that some people have, uh, if you have both the LT4s and these, some people have removed the lower section, either plank down mouth and carbon corks, and... Uh, well, I don't have it. But then they've put the LT4 poles, the lower shaft in there, and that actually gives them a little more distance because the LT4s, I broke off, I mean, I bet this thing was that much longer. And you can see, I mean, it, it's going to give me a couple more inches easily. So that's an option if you're looking for a little extra length on something like that. So anyway, I've done enough talking. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I'm going to use uh, to take this thing apart. Like I said, this is my finished one. The one thing that I have to be, be care careful about, though, with this um, is whenever I go to collapse it down, I need to make sure that I don't just ram this second tube up in here. Otherwise, eventually, I uh, don't know if it'll make a difference up here. Uh, that's the only thing. However, I'm pretty easy on my gear. Um, so I'm not too worried about it. And if it comes through, I'll just, uh, um, I'll get another, uh, pair of cork grips and replace it. One thing I was thinking about after, uh, I got done, it would be hard to do, I think, but maybe taking a penny or a nickel or something, whatever might fit, uh, and putting it on the edge of that thing, maybe gluing it down that way. Whenever you slam this part up in there, it would hit that nickel instead of the, the grips. Only thing is it would add weight. So anyway guys, that's that's that. That's my overall comparison. Uh, I will say that I'm super excited about using these again now uh, to see what I think about them now. Um, 6.8 ounces, I don't think that's too bad. Uh, it could be lighter, like I said. My, my LC4s are like 4 ounces, so these are, uh, these are still considerably heavier than those. Uh, but I went down from over 8 ounces to 6.8 ounces, so... Uh, that's nice. And the grips uh, are really comfortable. I like the grips now, so they may change for me. 
Now I want to show you a couple of things that I use to uh, to get these grips exchanged and stuff. Sorry about that, my coffee's sitting here getting cold. Um, okay, first off I want to say that the shafts on the blank diamond holes are way huger than the shafts on the LT4. Um, because of that, I had to I had to put a lot of elbow grease into getting the grip on. Before I get that far though, um, what I'm using is just a sharp uh, blade that I'll actually, what I'll do is, you'll see, I'll just make an incision, incision, I'll make a cut, and then I'll just start peeling this off, and I'll do the same thing up here. Um, I've got that. I've also got some of these uh, adhesive tape remover pads because uh, the glue, there's a lot of glue up underneath this, and got to put elbow grease into getting all that glue and stuff off. And just going in there and using some hot water and a towel just doesn't cut it. Uh, so some uh, tape adhesive remover, remover uh, that really helps. Um, still has to put a little effort into it. Uh, also, I, I want to say that I use most of the tape adhesive remover, remover under the black part of the pole. Uh, whereas at the top part, really what I did is I have a Dremel and I have one of the little sandpaper wheels. And after I got most of the cork off, I just put the... Uh, the little sandpaper wheel in there and just kind of got the rest of it off. Now I will say that did a couple of things. That took a little extra carbon off the shaft, uh, carbon fiber, although I was very careful not to get deep into it. I mean it was really just knocking off the extra cork and any kind of glue. Um, but what that did is it roughed it up a little bit, uh, the carbon fiber, and I feel like it's probably going to help hold uh, the grips on. Also it was just made it easier to uh, get rid of all the, the glue and stuff. Now, like I said, once I got that off, I had to cut this off uh, because that was the way I did it. Um, I tried to remove this pin, trying to pry it out and stuff, and it's beveled out inside there, and it's just, you can't get into the center um, because of the uh, uh, because of the, the rest of the shaft is still attached. One option, you might could cut it on the uh, above the screw, maybe and then uh, work your way from the top. That might be an option, I don't know. Uh, however, all I did was I cut it. And I just used this little saw here to cut it. Honestly, this little saw, because of the particular saw blade that I have on here, uh, it made it a pain in the butt. Uh, so I don't think I'm gonna use that again. I think what I'm gonna do is I just have a little cutting wheel for my Dremel. Uh, I'll just use that to cut it. And then also, once I get done, uh, I just use this to kind of smooth up the, the edges and stuff like that. Um, other than that, I've got my grips. And I know you can't see it, but um, those poles, they slide in really easy. But, I mean, that's, that's about right right there. I mean, that's about what it needs to be. And uh, the shafts on the LT4s, let me just, this is not, I need a caliber. I might have to buy one of those anyway. But um, it looks like the shafts on these may be around like 9 sixteenths of an inch. Uh, somewhere around there. Uh, I don't have sixteenths of an inch, I only have eighths of an inch on here, but it was, uh, that's about what it would measure. And then the shafts on these things is closer to three quarter of an inch. So, uh, there is a big difference there, and because of that, it took a lot of effort to get that big old thick shaft into this little hole. Um, what I did is I just kind of, uh, at first I just kind of tried to get this hole uh, wall it out just a little bit so I can start getting the grip or the shaft down in there. And then once I kind of wallered it out a little bit, put it in there, and then I would just kind of twist them, twist them both, and that would kind of slowly work the shaft farther into the grip. Uh, after a point, uh, like I said, and I'll show you this in a little bit, um, since this part actually stuck up a little bit over the shaft, I would stick this inside the, the shaft that was in the pole and I would kind of twist that, and I feel like that would kind of help expand it a little bit more. I pull that out, work on some more. You'll see all that in a little bit. Uh, that was probably the toughest part. I feel like I've got like some sheer tears or something in my, my hands because I was having to grip both of them so tight and just twist the far out of them. Uh, but anyway, I'm already making this video way longer than I anticipated. Um, one other thing, I went and bought some Gorilla Glue, uh, Gorilla Glue because I was anticipating gluing the grips to the poles. However, this grip is just simply slid on there. 
and it took me so much work and effort to get on there, I don't see it coming off at all. Um, I really, really don't see this thing pulling off. Um, it's just, I mean, because of the size difference, um, it is stuck to it. And then also because of the carbon fiber, um, it's kind of smooth and uh, it's kind of grippy, sort of. Uh, I mean, not like texture grippy, but it's just because it's so smooth, it has kind of a suction or something. So I feel like that's on there pretty, pretty good. So I didn't use anything. I have no plans to use in this at all. Um, also, one nice thing is if uh, if I ever do need to exchange, take, the, take these off, it shouldn't be any problem. Just simply cut it and peel it right off, and I won't have to worry about all that glue and everything again. So anyway, like I said, the first thing that I'm going to do, I know I went way too far. I'm going to reposition that camera so you can see a little better, um, and I'm going to start peeling all of this stuff off here. So give me just a second. Okay, guys, this should be in the picture pretty good. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my sharp blade, and I'm just going to make an incision uh, just right down this, this grip here. I'm trying not to press too super hard, um, just so I don't cut into the fiber, uh, the carbon fiber pole. Uh, once I cut, just start working, working this grip off. And you can see there's all that glue and stuff underneath it, so it's just... Uh, that's where my pads are going to come into play. And uh, the other one, it pulled, it did, it actually came off pretty well. This one's not coming off too terribly bad. Um, but I'm wanting to say that this one is even a little more glued down than the, what the other one was. But you can see all that white stuff there. That's, uh, even with this tape adhesive remover stuff, it's still pretty, pretty tough to, uh, to get all of it off. I would hate to know that I was just trying to do it with um, uh, with like water or something. So anyway, there that's off. And one thing I want to do, someone asked me how much weight I would they would save if they was to just remove the black parts. And I didn't weigh it last time. Uh, keep in mind, you still have to get that glue off. Um, I don't, I don't know. Uh, looks like the black part weighs about 0 0.2 ounces um, or 5 grams. It's actually going between 4 and 5 grams. So, not much weight at all there, just removing that. But, uh, if you don't use it, you don't use it. Um, so, the next part is going to be cutting this cork off. And this is going to be a little, at least on the other one, it was a little tougher. I don't mind cutting so hard into this part because when I put this other grip on, um, it's going to cover any kind of scratches or anything I have on there. Really just this part I want to clean up real good and make it look nice. So I've cut that. and Now this part is going to take me a little while, probably. Hmm. I'm trying to do this too where it stays in the camera. And don't don't get wrong, um, I think they put more glue up towards the top than they did the bottom. Because um, here in a little bit it's gonna be it's already getting that way. It's I mean this stuff is just stuck down on there. So uh Anyway, I'm going to cut the camera off, uh, just so you don't have to watch me do this. This may take me a little bit. Um, and I'll cut it back on when I get this done. So hang on. Okay, guys. As you can see, I've got the cork grip off. Uh, it took me about four or five minutes. It took less time this time. Um, what I actually did this time, um, and since I knew it was okay, for, even if this got marred up just a little bit, because like I said, I'm going to put a little piece of uh, the little sanding wheel to it. Um, I just took my knife and just kind of kept chipping down um, and got it off all that way. And as you can see, this plastic part here came off super easy. Um, I, I guess the glue, um, it just kind of, you can see here's some of the glue here. It must form, or maybe they tape it, I don't know. Um, but it sticks completely different to this plastic housing up here. 
than it does to the carbon fiber. And then you can see here, this is where the uh, cork grip ended and the, the black grip started. Um, and that looks like a lot of the same type of paper up there. So I don't know if it's just the material or I don't understand, but it sticks differently. But right here, it sticks super tough. Um, so like I said, I just kind of did like that. And uh, I think that would be a perfectly fine way to get all this off if you wanted to, if you didn't have a Dremel or, or some sandpaper. Also, another thing is since I know that this time I'm going to be cutting it right there, um, I could have just stopped once I got there and cut that off and been done with it. But I wanted to take all that off to show you what it looked like uh, with everything off. And as you can see, there's... Uh, there's the little pile of cork. Uh, can't really weigh that, but uh, I'm going to say it's at least another 0 0.2, 0 0.3, maybe even 0.4 ounces for all of that junk. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm not worried about it, to be honest. Um, so anyway, so here's the problem I got into. Like I said, there's that little pin. Um, I guess I could cut up there uh, and then work at getting that pin out from the inside, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to stick to what I did last time, and I'm just going to cut this thing right here. So that's what I'm going to do real quick. I'm going to set up my Dremel. I'm going to get rid of this trash, and I'm going to set up my Dremel. So I'll be right back. Okay, guys. i got my Dremel set up. I've got the little cutting wheel on, and I've just got a box, the Dremel box, just resting here so I don't cut down to the table because my wife would uh, severely beat me if I did that. And also, for those of you interested, I am wearing safety glasses. Your eyes are very important. You only have two of them. So anytime you're doing anything that might damage your eyes, you need to protect them. So, here we go. I'm going to see how this works. Like I said last time, I used just a saw. Uh, this should work pretty well. Start out on the low, see how it does. I'm going to turn that up. Alright, there we go. And guys, I want to say, safety glasses rock, because I was eating this stuff. The carbon fiber, it's amazing at how much it, uh, it, at how messy it can be. Um, so definitely, like I said, make sure you wear your safety glasses. I've got little pieces, I know you can't see it in the camera, I've got little pieces of carbon fiber all over the front of that. So anyway, there we have it. Um, I got that part done. Uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to uh, unplug the the Dremel so it doesn't so it doesn't come on whenever I'm changing these bits out and I'm gonna go ahead and put the sandpaper bit on and then next I'm going to uh, get rid of all this and clean up this edge just a little bit you can see uh, because of the angle uh, especially when I got around this front part it was kind of angled and stuff so I need to clean that up just a little bit and smooth this out and then uh, I'll start working on getting all this off right here so uh, let me plug my Dremel back up and there's the part that I'm getting rid of and if you're just curious how much that weighs because um, I don't think I weighed any of these the first time I did it um, just that little part there weighs 1.1 ounces um, so I said the the black uh, part of the pole weighed 0.2 ounces, so that's 1.3. And if that just, if the the uh, cork just weighed another 0.2, um, we're looking at at least 1.5 ounces uh, that we removed. And we're replacing all of that with a uh, 0.5 ounce. It's actually 0.567 ounces according to my other scale um, grip. So uh, there you have it. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and work on this. I want to say, I really wish, maybe it's better for left-handed people because they'd be holding it with their left hand, uh, but for right-handed people, I wish this thing span, spun this way instead of this way because that means when I'm working, 
it's shooting all that stuff right up into my face. So that's why it's important uh, if you're going to do, do something like this to wear safety glasses. Um, I guess I could, no, uh, anyway. Put it on low. Alright, I got that done. Boy, if you can't tell on screen, this is just an absolute mess. Um, I've got that stuff all over my hands. Truth be told, honestly, I should probably even be wearing a face mask. Because um, I know I'm breathing this stuff in, and I don't know if it's that's very safe. Uh, but anyway. So, the top part is completed. I might touch up the edges just a little bit more. Um, because the smoother the edges are, the easier it's going to be to get it to go into this uh, trekking pole uh, grip or the Gossman gear grip because uh, if it's sharp and stuff, it's going to be trying to eat into the sides and it's just kind of tough. So I'll touch it up just a little bit, a couple places. Okay. So. There you have it. The end, this end is good now. Um, and it's kind of grippy. You can see this carbon fiber gets all over the place. So now I need to work on getting the, uh, the glue off of this end. So I'm going to clean this up and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I've got most of my mess cleaned up now. Um, so anyway, next thing, like I said, I've got the, the end here ready. Um, now all I need to do is get this, uh, this, this glue off. And actually underneath this, it's going to be just as bright and shiny as it is there. Uh, you can see how it turned out here. And actually a cool thing, I don't know if they did this just because of Black Diamond. I, I don't know. I don't understand. But it's pretty neat. There's a little star underneath there uh, whenever you take all the glue off. And uh, you can actually see it right there. So that kind of gives you an idea of where the pole is going to be whenever I'm done. I like so. Oops, wrong one. So, start taking these little pads, and I'll go through a number of these. Just start scrubbing. Like I said, these are, uh, oh, I know that's shaking the camera. It takes a lot of elbow grease, but it will cut it. Just takes a little while. You can see it's starting to come up here. There may be better ways of doing this, guys. I don't know. This is just what I happen to have with me on hand, and it will work. So um, there may be easier ways. Feel free to post them below. So if anybody else does this, you know they'll maybe they could do that way instead of this way. But there we go. So. Grab another one and keep going. And uh, like I say, I'll do this for a little while or until I get all the glue off. And uh, once I get the glue off, I'll be just about ready to go ahead and set uh, or start working on getting the grip on, getting there. I know this video has turned out much longer than I originally anticipated. But honestly, I'm not surprised because a lot of my videos are just super long. So for the ones of you that are still hanging in there, I appreciate you watching. Um, I am going to post that uh, if you just want to jump straight to me working on it, um, I'll try and figure out where that is going to start. And instead of making people sit through all the beginning where I just talk. But you know what, my videos, I'm saying what I want to say, and uh, if you clicked on this video, it's because you're interested anyway, so take it for what it is. But anyway, I'll get this done, and then I'll turn the camera back on. Okay, uh, you can see now I have the, uh, have the pole all cleaned up, got all the tape off of it. And there it is. Um, 
I used about eight of those little pads. I could have got away with less, but uh, I had enough of them, so I just went ahead and changed them out pretty often. Uh, you can see that it's got a little, still kind of got a slick surface on it. It's kind of greasy, sort of, um, from the, the pads. Um, I'm actually going to leave that on and see if that might help kind of lube that grip going on there. Because uh, that's all we have left to do now, is just putting the grip on there. And I know this is probably not going to be a good representation, but um, let's see here. I don't know if you can see that outer ring, but this pole is definitely larger than the, uh, the insert there. Kind of give you an idea if uh, you can make any sense of that. Um, you can see the difference there. Actually, there's the difference there. You can see how much smaller. I don't know how well that's focusing. I hope it's focusing. There you go. There you go. You can see the difference in diameter of an LT4 and uh, the uh, the black diamond. And just to show you again, the LT4 slides down in nice and smooth. And while it's not super tight, and there is a little bit of space around it, um, there's not a whole lot, but. Um, you can see how easy it is. However, this one is going to be a much different story. So, like I said, the best thing I found to do is just kind of try and get the front part of it watered out just a little bit. Just try to open that up to at least introduce um, this pole. And once you get it on there, the secret's going to be to just keep twisting. And this is the tough part. For me, anyway. Maybe some of you out there has got a stronger grip than I do. But, just keep twisting. Hang on a second. Now one of these little grippy things is like a, uh, a bottle opener. Let's see if I can kind of hang on to the pole a little bit better with that. And also this time, like I said, I left the, uh, oh shoot, there you go. That's why you got to be careful, because I actually cut into it. So, probably going to have to buy some more grips. Yep, there you go. I'll try to make this one still work. That's a bummer. Um, the grips, they do thin out pretty well uh, once you get into this area. Some people have said that uh, They've put like a screwdriver or something inside it and just rolled it back and forth and that would help to uh, widen it out. Although I believe the damage has been done. Let's try it again. So folks, that is how not to do it. <laughs> See, I'm getting to that point again. Yeah, there's a good chance this is a uh, this grip is going to be a lost cause. I don't think it's going to be the same. Just 
complete the tear in it. And that's a bummer because I got my other one on so well. So it looks like I'll have to place another order for these grips and uh, take it from there. I still want to try to get this one on. Um, like I was saying earlier, um, I should have went slower with this one, but what I would do is, once I would get it in so far, I would take the other shaft, uh, and let me show you what I was talking about. Since I cut that piece off, now you can see how much of that shaft actually sticks out. So that's why whenever it's in there, that red piece is only going to go up so far to the top, and that's why you have that much extra sticking out. Uh, but what I did with the other one um, is I would put it on so far and take this and stick it inside there. And since that sticks out a little bit farther, I put it in there and kind of turn it a little bit. And I think that helped to stretch the hole out and maybe remove any cork that might be in the way. You can see that it's there right now. and maybe open up the uh, the hole so I can go in there, but yeah, that's, that's gonna be a loss. That's a bummer. Like I said, I still wanna see if I can get it on though. Guys, this particular one is gonna be a fail, looks like, because it just keeps ripping. However, as you can see, this one went on super, super good. And I did not use any lube or anything like that. Uh, it just went on. So, anyway, that would have been my pair of black diamond poles. And just to show you, uh, you can see where the stars are. That's how much more farther, if that's focusing, I would have to go up into the handle. So, I still had a good ways to go. But anyway guys, sorry this uh, video turned out so, or the way that it did. Uh, slow and easy is obviously the way to take it. I guess I got a little carried away because, you know, this one went on so well. Um, like I said, I had to do a lot of torquing and uh, just actually hurt my hands pretty well, but there you go. That's why you take your time. So anyway guys, uh, it didn't turn out like expected, but you do see that it works. Um, so if you have any comments or questions, feel free to post those below and I'll do my best to reply to them or answer any questions you may have. And, uh, guys, I appreciate you watching. I know it's been a super long video, um, and then for it to turn out the way it did, I know a bunch of you are probably thinking, oh, this was not worth watching at all. Um, but anyway, eventually I'll get around to ordering some more grips for it. And, uh, at least that way I'll have one extra in case I need it for something. And, uh, I'll take my time and eventually I'll get them up that way. Um, however, real quick, what I will do um, is I'll go ahead and weigh this thing because technically it does have everything that it would, would be. Like I said, this one weighed eight point, it rocked between 8.1 and 8.2 ounces um, before. Now, with the grip that it has on it is uh, 6.7 ounces. So that one is actually lighter than this one. Okay, it's 6.8 ounces as well. So for the both of them, it's going to be like 13.6 ounces. Yep, it's going between 13.6 and 13.7. Uh, 13.6, 13.7 for the pair. So I don't think that's going to be too bad. It's a bummer. I was looking forward to using this on a hike uh, coming up. But I don't guess I'm going to now. So, 
Uh, maybe sometime between now and then also I'll figure out a better way to uh, actually stretch these things. Yeah, it's just eating up that cork inside there. Um, one thing that I thought about doing, the only thing is I just don't have any big enough drill bits, is uh, if I had a drill bit, uh, before I used it, I could, uh, you know, just drill down in there, kind of open that up just a little bit. I may even try that next time. I have some that are pretty close to this size. Uh, maybe if we can just get in there and eat up some of it, uh, make that opening a little bigger. But anyway, guys, uh, sorry it turned out that way, but uh, for those of you that's watched the whole thing, I know it's been a super long video. I appreciate you watching. And again, like I said, if you have any comments or questions, just post them below, and I'll do my best to get back to you with those. And guys, I appreciate you watching. Have a good day.